Every CS player at least knows of Office. The original creator of Office, Alex Manilov, is an interesting guy. A mapper for Doom, Quake, and Warcraft before CS, Alex reportedly learned of CS at a LAN party and began his first foray into CS mapping that very night. The map that he laid the first stones of that day would eventually become the most iconic CS map never to be officially included in CSGO. Prodigy. This video's sponsor is ScopeGG. Scope is a great way to improve at CS. It analyzes your matches and tells you where you need to improve. Plus, with their new pre-match system, you can win the match before it's even started. All you have to do is connect your Faceit account to ScopeGG. Then, during the warm-up timer, conveniently shown on the page, your opponents will automatically be connected and analyzed by Scope. The interface is very easy to use, and shows spots your opponents like to push, their favorite weapons, and even their playstyle. For instance, ScopeGG told me that this guy likes to hold from CT with an op, so I took a risky deagle peek and it paid off. Scope GG, feel the game. Prodigy is a weird ass map by modern standards. If you watched my video on Foption a few weeks ago, you'll notice a lot of similarities in setting. Prodigy takes place within a military base on top of a mountain. Many original Counter Strike maps take place within some kind of secret underground facility for a few reasons. First of all, the assets that they were given were mainly for this setting, due to Counter Strike being a mod for Half Life. And secondly, it was a lot easier to make inside spaces due to the trouble that detailing outdoor areas was and the limitations of the Gold Source engine. And no, it's not just you, this skybox definitely does look bad. In a more accurate resolution to the times, though, it looked fine. This map falls victim to the biggest problem that the earliest Diffuse maps pretty much all fell for, not knowing what makes a good layout and what makes a bad one. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the fault of the mapper. Prodigy is tied for the oldest Diffuse map in the game with Dust and Nuke. Outside of the limited playtesting the map probably received, there was literally nothing to base the design of Prodigy off of. That said, because of this, Prodigy has a fairly interesting layout that we will most likely never see again. At the start of the round as T, you are presented with two real options, the left path or the right path, both of which lead you around to this main hub area where both bomb sites are located. Many people consider Prodigy to be a map with a very confusing layout, and I have to agree. While most of the action occurs in one of these two areas, the internal layout is a mess of corridors, vents, and ladders. I have mentioned a lot in previous videos how CS maps are usually either three-lane or experimental. Well, before the dawn of the three-lane map, everything was an experiment and Prodigy falls into that category easily. Because of the weird placement of T-spawn and relation to the bomb sites, rotates on the T-side take ages and are usually not the right move. Think of a normal CS map that just lacked a middle. Both bomb sites are in a similar location and can easily be bottlenecked to two or three tight spaces. Also, this door is weird because you don't press E on it to open it, you press E on this panel over here. I don't know if this was done as some sort of deep, thought-out feature to limit a specific strategy, or if it was more of a this-would-be-cool type of thing. I would lean more towards the latter. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, the year is now 2004. There's this cool new thing called Facebook, chill and beat Ken, I knew that guy wasn't all he's cracked up to be, and finally, this great new Counter-Strike game just released. I'm sure this game will disappoint absolutely nobody. Jokes aside, the Source version of Prodigy is very different to the 1.6 version. Despite how much I adore the Gold Source aesthetic, the Source engine brings so much charm to Prodigy. Specifically, the outside sections look so much more alive, and I can really get more immersed in the actual story of the map. Prodigy in CS 1.6 was an alright looking map, don't get me wrong, but due to the limited asset pool I mentioned earlier, its setting was very similar to many other CS 1.6 maps. CS Source brings the setting of Prodigy into its own, making it really feel like an abandoned military research outpost hidden within a foggy, forested mountaintop. Despite these graphical improvements, CS Source is always going to be CS Source, and because of that, this map is littered with physics props in the most inconvenient places. Because of these unfortunate physics props, I would say that the definitive version of Prodigy is still the 1.6 version, or I guess if you want to be technical, the Condition Zero version is prettier and keeps the 1.6 gameplay. When Counter-Strike made the leap to CSGO, Prodigy was left behind. 
But it was not always planned to be this way. There are traces within the game files that lead us to believe that Prodigy was originally planned to be in Global Offensive, but was cut sometime during the development process, along with two other legacy maps, Piranesi and Tides. All three of these maps are referred to in the SteamDB stats page, and there were achievements related to all of them that were never implemented. The reason that Prodigy was cut from CSGO is unknown, but it's easy to tell if you give it some thought. Prodigy was not popular. CSGO at launch was not short of imbalanced maps. The difference between Prodigy and, say, Dust or Aztec is that Dust and Aztec are both some of the most beloved maps in Counter-Strike history. It really says something that when I searched Counter-Strike forums and community spaces for posts asking about Prodigy and CSGO, I found two Reddit posts from 2013, then relative silence. If you want Prodigy in CSGO, then you have a few options. There are direct ports of both the 1.6 and Source versions if you want the nostalgic feel. There is a remake using more modern assets if you like the old layout but want more modern graphics. Or at least something resembling the old layout. The mapmaker does take a lot of creative liberties on this one. And finally, there is an attempted retooling called Progeny that keeps the general feel but modernizes the layout. Progeny is a good map, but it has a problem. A little while ago, I made a video called The Unfixable Maps of CSGO. In this video, I mentioned an unfortunate conundrum that you encounter when trying to fix a map to make it more balanced and fun. When a map is so incredibly flawed like Prodigy, the monumental effort and retooling required to make it balanced is greater than that needed to just design a new map from the ground up. And even if you were to go through with that long and arduous process, oftentimes it strips away the uniqueness and character of that map, making the entire effort somewhat worthless. Progeny suffers from this effect. Don't get me wrong, Progeny probably plays a hell of a lot better than Prodigy did, and there are some parts that are unmistakably Prodigy, but most of it just feels like another map altogether. Prodigy is a bad map, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a classic in its own right. While, yeah, it's unfortunate that Prodigy wasn't included in CSGO, it's a foregone conclusion that it would have been removed in 2017 along with Dust, Aztec, and the old Vertigo. Prodigy was not built for the new era of CS. It was born in the era that the Counter-Strike player base at large didn't care about high-level competition or balance. They just wanted to play Counter-Strike, and Prodigy filled that void for them. It didn't matter that Prodigy was unbalanced. Prodigy was fun, because Counter-Strike is fun. CS has evolved past the purpose of Prodigy. I'm not trying to pose this as a good thing or a bad thing. That's up to you to decide, but after all is said and done, one thing is certain. Prodigy will never be officially included in a Counter-Strike game again. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Penguin. I've wanted to make a video on Prodigy for a while, um, but I really actually liked how this turned out. I went into it kinda without an aim, and I ended up finding one about partway through the video, which was nice. Um, but anyways, I, I just kinda wanted to say, I think I'm gonna take this next week off, just to get my workflow back in order. Um, <laughs> it's gotten a bit hectic lately with me finishing videos like the day that they're coming out which just isn't great for my workflow and the way that I like to polish things. Um, but yeah, if you want more updates on that, follow me on Twitter. And uh, I'll be back in two weeks. See ya.